Yo, 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 it is summertime, and today we're gonna to talk about summertime, smallmouth, topwater bass fishing. That's right. When people think of smallmouth bass fishing, most anglers are thinking deep water, cold water, fishing lures on the bottom. That works, it works great. However, you can also catch them throughout the entire summer, and you can catch big ones in shallower water on topwater lures. And today I'm going to share with you some of my techniques and hopefully these tips I give you help you become a better uh, smallmouth angler if you're not already using them, that is. So, lures. It's pretty basic. Popper or whopper plopper. I use the whopper plopper 110 in bone color, throw it on 50 pound braid. That's what works for me. And one of the first areas we'll go over, because that's the first area I hit with success, is that first area I hit and it was successful the other day. And uh, that's shallow to shallow to somewhat steep or mellow drop-offs, slopes. Shallow water to slopes with docks coming out. These aren't usually back in, I'm not talking about back in the coves where the largemouth spawned and were on their beds where it's just, you know, a shallow, super shallow cove. You get deeper water. I'm talking, you know, six inches to a foot of water all the way down to, you know, 10 feet or so at the end of the dock. And when you're throwing around docks, a, a tip you want to keep in mind is it's not about how long you can throw it, it's about how accurate you can throw it. You want those precision primo casts tucked right under the dock, right by the dock, throw over the dock, but when you're reeling it in, have it come right by the front of it. Things like that. Because what happens when you hook, up the, hook somebody's dock, you got to get your lure back, you come in and you blow the spot up. And always get your lure back. You never want to use a lure, lose a lure, and you don't want anybody getting hooked, an animal getting hooked, anything like that. If someone really comes outside and gives you crap for taking a lure off their dock, just say, say, tell them the truth. Tell them you're getting your lure back. You didn't want anybody getting hurt. You won't cast there again. Keep it moving. Uh, so with that in mind, just always try to be as accurate as you can so you don't blow the spot up. And if you can get that primo cast, they usually hit it right away, as you'll see in this clip. That's a good one. Is that a smiley? Good way to start the day. Right, the next spot uh, is going to be right next to the docks. Most of the docks have boats on them pontoons, big boats, whatever it may be, and those work just like the docks. Big shaded area, nice cover for the smallmouth. They love hanging out on those, right on the slopes, right where I'm talking about. <clears throat> and uh, precision, precision casting, again, keep in mind, uh, it's one thing to hook someone's dock, and it's another thing to throw a lure inside someone's $75,000 Mastercraft and hook their leather seat. If someone's looking out their window and sees that happen, they're going to be pissed off. So, be real careful casting around the boats, but uh, be as accurate as you can, and you'll pull smallmouth out from under them like crazy, just like you will the docks too. Work them both. Don't ever pass it up. Just be safe about your cast. Another smallie. All right, next up is shaded areas. If you have a small shaded area, again, be precise with your cast. Because if you're not and you snag some sticks or something, you got to go get your lure back, you blew up the spot. Big shaded areas, just throw it in there. Never pass it, never pass up a shaded area, period. Especially in the summertime. Because fish can't blink, they don't have eyelids, it's hot, the sun's bothering them, and the shade's keeping the water cool. So there's a bunch of variables that go into that. Never skip a shaded area. Always throw one in there. It never hurts. Oh, 
I think that's number five. Another smallie too. That's a good looking smallie. We've been over docks, boats, slopes, and shaded areas. Now we're gonna cover floating structures. Never pass up a floating structure. It's providing shade, and there's always a chance you could pull a hog out from underneath the one. Up here in Traverse, tons of people got these floating docks, swim pads, I don't know what you call them. They're just a square pad with two pontoons on it, or two barrels, floating in about 10 to 20 feet of water with a rope and an anchor. Usually past the docks, because people like to dive and jump into deeper water. It's an area you wouldn't really think of throwing top water at, but you do by these. You can pull hogs out of them, as you'll see in the video. I got a nice four pounder. This clip is from last year. It's the only clip in this video that's from last year, but it's it was so important to put this floating structure in there because I'm telling you there's monsters under these things. It's shade, and even though it's in 20 feet of water, they're not gonna be down at the bottom of the 20 foot of water because you got your dock here. Sun's over here, sun's over here. It's always it's to the side if it's not directly above the dock. So that sun's beating down onto that 20 foot of water. So the fish is going to be right under the dock. He's going to be right at the top. You throw the lure right by it, twitch it a couple times. If there's one there, man. The reaction strike on those are pretty, is pretty much instant. They'll just come out and nail it, like you'll see in this clip. Uh, never pass one up. Even the uh, floating buoys people like to put by their swim pads or out past their docks to keep the big boats from getting close. You know, just the little tubes, the little white tubes, little buoy with a rope and an anchor. There's no shade with those. I really don't have an answer for that, but never skip those either. Never skip any floating structure to hunker down on those as well. Um, so yeah, that's it on that. See the clip. Got him. The big one. He's sitting right under that uh, dock. This got to be a good smallmouth. He might be better than the. Damn, another big smallie, baby. Another big smallie. A zero. Oh shit. Four oh five. The last tip and clip I got for you, because I want to make this a little short, I've already went on a little bit longer than I wanted to, uh, but the last clip and tip is going to be uh, fishing drop-offs or humps, is what I call them. Uh, the sandbars come out in a peninsula, and each side is a sandy, you know, drop-off with weeds, whatever. When you come into those, you got both sides, and that's why I like them, you got both sides you can try and hit them on. This particular spot had one of the swimming pads I was talking about from the last clip, so I got to hit that. This was a juicy spot. I knew I was going to pull one out of here. But I hit the swim pad. Didn't get nothing. And uh, the sandbar's out there. It drops off, but there's also a dock there. So I got it between where the sandbar's going down and where the dock is. And the thing I like to target when I'm on these sandbars and drop-offs, because we're fishing topwater. A lot of the wall walleye guys fish the bottom through there. But for smallmouth on top water, they're right on the edge where the color line is. And what I mean by color line is <clears throat> you'll see a little bit of sand and then it turns blue as it gets deeper. You'll see weeds. It'll be like a bluish green and then you'll have a tan sand color. And right where they meet, that's right where you want to throw at. Because those smallmouth, they're just tucked down just a little bit deep off that hump. And when something comes in that shallow, boom, they're on it. I mean, it's like this thing seen it in the air. It was ready to eat it before it hit the water. And it happens all the time on these drop-offs. So that's a really good spot. Really good spot you never want to overlook either. I hope you enjoyed these tips. I hope you enjoyed these clips. Click the subscribe button. Like the video. Until uh, next time, keep them lines tight. And good luck fishing. There it is. There it is at the water. Right where he's supposed to be. Oh, 
man, that's a good smallmouth. Oh shit, that's a real good smallmouth.